I want to bring in an expert, the leading expert on the world of women and dating. Ricky Camilleri, it's good to have you here. Oh, 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 oh. I've been sitting here for so long, sorry. <laughs> Hi, it's good to see you. It's great to see you. Yeah. It's, I miss you. So tell me, what's up? What am I doing okay. here? What do you want me here I for, want Caitlin? I here to tap into your expertise into the female brain. Oh, you know please. Oh, Let's, so well. uh, there I don't is know a about great that. blog on the Huffington Post right now, The 11 Differences Between Dating a Girl and a Woman by Amy Chan. And it's sort of a round two from an earlier piece that she wrote about the differences of dating a man versus a boy. So okay. would you like to walk through some of these? Sure. Do you feel like you have a good handle? Have you dated both what you consider a woman versus a girl? Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, I would say that. It's interesting, as I'm reading over the list, which we will go through now if I can. I feel like this is all based on the assumption that I've dated a lot of people, though, which I'm slightly uncomfortable with. <laughs> really, here you could have just dated two, a yeah, girl and a woman. That's true. Okay. All right. Let's go through it. I think you know ladies well enough for this. I think I've been in relationships long enough, too, where I've seen a, a, a girl go become a woman oh, in the relationship. You. I'm not really sure where that's I land That's usually when they leave me. That's probably. <laughs> I'm not really sure where I land here. Number one, a girl throws tantrums. Mm -hmm. Which I think kind of goes nicely with number two. A girl perceives herself as a princess and believes people should treat her like so. I, I, I've been known to throw a tantrum or two in my day. I've seen you throw tantrums. Have you? No. I didn't think so. But I can like I can others. see a tantrum. I can Brewing. see you throwing a tantrum. I've definitely yeah. I, I've definitely done that. And the princess thing, I blame my parents. That's their fault. Yeah, uh, I think that it's it's odd to say that. Uh, you know, if you put an age on these uh, on, on women and girls, and you say that a girl at the a woman is a girl at the age of 24, and she throws tantrums, I definitely dated when I was 24, and the, and there were girls that were much more mature than me at that age, or less mature than me. I think it all depends on the person. I mean, if you want to define a girl as someone who throws tantrums, there are probably women who are in their 30s that still throw tantrums. You know? uh, yeah, and I think that's why they're not exactly assigning an age value to this, because whether where you are in the spectrum doesn't necessarily reflect your right. sort of numerical age. But I've definitely been known to throw a tantrum before, and I, as I'm getting older, I'm seeing it as being a little more like, oh, why but here's did the I thing. do that? Here's the thing, even if you don't throw tantrums anymore, there has to be something that takes the place of the tantrum. So what do you feel like you do now that is not necessarily a tantrum? Oh, it's just being passive aggressive. Exactly. That's exactly <laughs> That's what, what I was, looking, that was, what I I was looking for here. All right, moving down. A girl uses her physical beauty as her currency and basis of value. I, I definitely can see where you're coming well, from. Well, then I'm a girl. Better. Then you are a girl. Because I use my beauty as, a, as physical currency. Number four, a girl banks on a man to be her financial strategy. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's necessarily girl or woman. I feel like I think it just might be bad person. Agreed, agreed. Number five, a girl sees the world from a place of lack and scarcity. She competes and will even tear down another in order to secure resources or a mate. I think that's very, it's high school. That feels very high school-ish to me, the mean girls. I think you do grow out of that at some point in life. Yeah. Um, number six, a girl cannot be bothered with anything domestic and is proud of the fact well, that Well, hold on, wait, can we go back to the one before? Back. Excuse me, sorry, I don't mean to interrupt you. Uh, but the one before, I feel like I notice and this is a thing that I hear women talk about all the time in their interpersonal relationships with female friends, is that there's still an element of that, even in growing up, in different ways. It's a bit more passive aggressive, like we said before, but I think I've heard, and I, and I, and I, and I may be wrong, and I don't want to pigeonhole any woman out there, but I think most women that I know, when they talk about their relationships with their friends, there's always a number of friends that are like, Oh, she came and said that. Like, there, there's a bit more passive. There's still there an is. element of that mean girl passive aggression. There is. I think that it always sort of stays with you a little bit. It, maybe yeah. it's the hormonal aspect of it. Maybe that sort of catty aspect. Yeah. But I think that as you get older, you recognize that. Oh, it's, it feels so high school. It feels. Mm -hmm. It feels so mean girl. So if it's happening, at least you're recognizing that it's happening and maybe trying to to push it to the side. Number six. I definitely am not there. I love being domestic. I love to cook. I don't like cleaning, but I love to make a mess and cook. So that one. I don't think I was ever there. Seven, a girl wants attention, a woman wants respect. I think that's a, a good sort of basis. It's the difference between walking into a bar and you know, wanting to have a drink with your friends and walking into a bar and wanting everyone to look at you. Yeah, I agree, but I think, I think everyone wants both of those. Everyone wants a little bit of attention and everybody wants respect. If you get, as you get older, you want more respect than you want attention, but everybody still wants some kind of attention, especially from their significant other. I don't, maybe other people don't. We're talking to you and me. Of course we both want attention. We're, ter we're terrible for we're this one. We're literally on camera there. right now number asking, eight, begging for attention. Number eight, a girl does not respect her body. I think that's um, sort of a blanket statement, but I don't know. What do you think? I, I feel as though as women learn their bodies more as they get older, they can find a greater respect for them that maybe they don't understand when they're younger. 
I wouldn't know. Uh, this one I wouldn't know. I can't really hypothesize. Which is so on this interesting one. because I would think that it's with a guy that that's where that sort of dichotomy would come into play. Mm -hmm. You know, the the don't look at X, Y, and Z, or do my thighs look fat? Do I look fat on this? I feel is something you say before you really understand who you are. Absolutely, but I think it's also the guy that you're with. The guy that you're with has to be complimentary towards your body, has to be understanding of your body. I mean, if you're with a partner and your partner says to you, you know, hey, maybe we should start exercising a little bit more, uh, something like that, it has to be coming from a good place. You have to trust that person. You have to really trust that person. And that might be a husband that you don't trust, a husband of 20 years maybe, or, or a partner of 20 years. But maybe if you do trust that person, you can listen to them and you can see your body through their eyes all the time. And I think that, that trust is and respect kind of go hand in hand. If you trust and respect yourself, you tend to trust and respect the person who Absolutely. is your partner. I think that's a great point to bring up. Number nine, a woman takes the time to reflect on the type of human she wants to be, the example she wants to leave, and the vision for her life. I do think that as, I mean, and I think the same must be for a man that you get to a certain point in your life where... Yeah you know, the superficial is less important and you're actually thinking about the person that you are and there is definitely a, a threshold where you just sort of have to cross over that and realize, okay, I'm a grown up now. Yeah, absolutely. I have a quick personal story in regards to that, and, uh, which is that, you know, I was with someone recently, a, a woman who's, you know, turning, about to turn 30 and they were saying that they want to spend more of their time focusing on women's issues and helping other women and they didn't really know how yet but they really wanted to focus on it. And I think this goes to me and says that I'm more of a boy than I am a man, I'm, I'm, I'm open to admit that, I'm not necessarily proud of it. But as she was talking about all these things that she wanted to do for women, how she wanted to be a better person, I was thinking about myself in this way that was just like, I just, I just, want, I just all that sounds so boring. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you'll get there, Ricky. Maybe you will get there. I can see what you're saying, though. When I look through this list, I'm sort of, half of them I can understand and half of them I can't. So yeah. as the great Britney Spears would say, I'm not a girl, not yet a woman. Don't sing it. God, I've been waiting Don't so sing long it. We'll get to I won't. I'm not singing it, but I've been waiting so long to say that after I read this list. Anyway, Ricky, thank you so much for joining me. I always love having you here. I Amy Chan's you. full list. I miss you so much. The 11 differences between dating a girl and a woman is below in our resource well, so check that out.